<laughs> as and as Sully would call it, that casino movie. <laughs> no, it's the casino movie. Um, so and we, they're off. Yeah, oh, we're almost there. It's very exciting times. All right, we got a lot to dive into today, and I, I want to get into the Isaiah Thomas stuff. Um, Charles Barkley had some things to say, and I, I think, unfortunately, this is where we're at in 2017. You just get people that are a bunch of hyenas who want to get out there and attack everybody. Barkley paid for his opinion. He offered his opinion. I don't think he articulated it particularly well, but I think I get what he was saying. And as a Celtics fan, I want to give you my spin watching it. And as everyone knows, Isaiah Thomas lost his sister day before yesterday, found out uh, at practice, horrifying, but played. And I want to go through that and kind of talk with you, the people, about it and what we expect of athletes why is it? Why are certain things acceptable and not? We'll get into it. But I at least wanted to do, to do a mention. I thought the Tigers had a hell of a weekend. And I think what we're getting wrapped up in, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody usually, and, and for whatever reason, I just don't feel that way about this Tiger team. People get wrapped up in how pretty stuff is or how comfortable stuff is. When you look at the Tigers from 30,000 feet above, they're 8-4 and four and just won two out of three in Cleveland. And... If you know anything about how last year went, obviously, Cleveland pounded your head in with a tack hammer all year. You went to their place, you took two out of three. Now, I heard Gator talking about it, and look, Gator's a far more positive guy. He likes these teams. I'm not a fan of these teams. I just talk about them. Um, but he said, well, it didn't feel like a series win. And I understand. Friday night, they almost gagged it away. Got out of a base loaded jam, load the bases up again, bring in the closer, grand salami, pizza for everybody. You still win 7-6. Come back on Saturday, Verlander got rocked. Not a whole lot you can do with it. But people focus on Anibal in the game. You clawed your way back. Anibal takes you out of game. Come back yesterday. I'll take Matt Boyd had a terrible debut. He's come back with two really nice performances. I thought Boyd was great. I thought the pen was okay. Above average bullpen. Good thing Sully's not here today. He'd be getting raked over the coals. But here's my, my thing. And if anybody wants to call in and talk Tigers to start, I want you to know I'd love to do it. But I think if you're going to get any enjoyment out of this team this year, you're going to have to mentally accept some certain things. And I don't think there's a way around it. I mean, we always get in this habit every year. Terry and I always start talking and go, look, we're not going to do X this season. And I remember last year I said it to you. I'm not going to get into Osmus every single day. I said when he does things that are really, really egregious, of course I will. Because emotionally, I won't be able to stop myself. But I didn't want to get into it every day. This year, it's the same thing. I don't want to talk about the bullpen every day. I know the bullpen stinks. I know who in the bullpen stinks. I know it. You know it. Roberto's mother knows it. Everybody knows. But you're going to have to accept that fact because they don't have anything else. Do I want to see uh, Jimenez up here? Of course I do. Do I want to see him give an ample opportunity to be impactful with this team? Of course I do. But anybody who watches this Tiger team who thinks that K-Rod is somehow going to be exponentially better, that long-term Ron Doan's going to be a big factor, that Shane Green is going to somehow end up being flawless, even though he's been okay, it's just not going to happen. You're going to have to just deal. And I, I hate saying that to you because I'm the guy who loves to just constantly, like, wail on things. But with this Tiger team, I really don't see an out. Normally, I can offer you a solution. They just went in and took two out of three from Cleveland. Most nights, you take the field, you're going to have a lineup that's better than your opposition. And most nights that you take the field, you're going to have an advantage on the mound. That's how you're going to win a bunch of games. And I'm not telling you they're going to be world beaters. But do I think they can make the wild card? Yes, I do. Is part of that to do with the fact your division is a bit of a dumpster fire? Yeah, it is. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that you're going to get great starting pitching, which you've gotten. I know Saturday was a little rough, but it, guys, they're, they're men. They're not machines. But you're going to get great starting pitching. And eventually, because remember, you got several regulars that are in deep slumps. Eventually, you're going to start hitting the hell out of baseball. But you're going to have to wrap your mind around the fact that this pen is not going to get fixed because I don't think it's fixable. Your closer's 100 years old, and he, you know, he's out there throwing 85, 86 fastballs and then 83 mile-an-hour changeups. It's just, I can't fix that. 
And as much as I want him and as here, I can't fix Rondon. This is what they are. The bullpen is going to cost them games. It's going to make games closer than they should be. And every once in a while, the bullpen will pitch well, and you'll have Sully saying this. Above average bullpen. But I'm actually, I was very pleased with the weekend overall, albeit not a pleasurable watch. Took two out of three from Cleveland. Job well done. Now go to Tampa. And it's the same thing. Look at tomorrow night. It, it's case in point. You're going to be putting Michael Fulmer on the mound. They're going out there with Andres. It's an advantage. Your lineup advantage. Go out. Take care of business. They're 8-4. and four, Nice start to the season. And I'm never going to be the person who's going to sell you on, well, it could always be work. Look, try being a Blue Jay fan right now. See how 2-9 and nine or whatever it is strikes you. So I'm just kind of rolling with it. But I just, you know, I, I I heard Gator talking about it, and it didn't feel like a series win, and I'm going, oh, come, wait a second now. It felt like a series win to me. 162 games, baseball, not played on PlayStation, they're not all going to be pretty. This bullpen is what it is. I can't fix it. Yes, David, quickly. It, it isn't going to be pretty, but it needs to look better than this. It, it absolutely does. What do you want me to say? The ERA of 6.64 from the bullpen. Above average bullpen. That is not above average, and it needs to change. I understand that, but I don't think it will. And I think the only thing that, that has to change is your expectations. You cannot expect this to change. You cannot expect your manager to be one of the better ones in baseball. But I, I, I David... Everything you're saying is correct, but I cannot offer you solutions. I think what you should be more frustrated with is the fact that your franchise has had a bullpen issue for a decade. And that I am more frustrated with. When I looked at these numbers, it's it's startling, to be honest. It's right. so startling. But at 8-4 and four to start the year, you're off to as good a start as anybody. And you just took 2-3 or three from a divisional rival and a team that I think we all agree is better than you are. I'm not going to sit here and pick that apart. Not today. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. You got takes on your baseball team? Dial in with them. Take a text nine seven one three six. I'm all. I'll talk baseball every day. You know that, guys. And I want to mix in this IT four stuff though. Isaiah Thomas. I got some Charles Barkley audio. You're gonna want to listen to, because then I'm gonna decode it for you. Because I don't think Chuck did a good job articulating what I think he meant. We'll get into that. We have a full baked potato today.